Hello, my YouTube friends. There are three big players in the browser-based live streaming game, at least for now. StreamYard, Restream, and Melon. We have an all-out battle royal on our hands. Which one is the best? We're gonna find out today, so let's get to it. My analytics say that 80% of the folks that watch my content are not subscribed. Am I doing something wrong? If so, let me know in the comments. But if you are looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. It's totally free. We have a lot to look at and compare with these three fantastic apps. First, I'm gonna compare the feature sets that you get with each of these pieces of software. Second, I'm gonna compare the ease of use for each piece of software. Third, I'm gonna break down adding a guest to each of these applications and show you it from the guest perspective as well. Fourth, I wanna compare the pricing, what each includes for free, and how the feature tiers break down. And last but not least, I'm gonna give you the pros and cons of each app and my personal recommendations or thoughts. There are links to Melon, Restream Studio, and StreamYard in the description so you can check them out for yourself. And it's totally free. So why not? Okay, let's dive into these features. All three of these applications have the ability to use a green screen and add and remove a logo. Right here in StreamYard, we're gonna look at the multimedia features. You can add overlays to your live stream. You can also add video clips, and these video clips will play over top of anything that's actually on the screen. It also has a background feature, so these will be featured behind your actual screens. Now we're gonna flip over into Melon, and it has this really fantastic themes feature where you can select from a bunch of different themes that have animated text and animated overlays and all kinds of cool stuff. Each one of the different themes will give you different fonts and all that. And the best part is if you flip over into design, you can then adjust those themes by adding your own background and your own overlay. You can even upload your own backgrounds or overlays if you like. It also has a video feature which will play over everything on the screen. Starting out here in Restream, there is an overlay function in the graphics section. You can add overlays that are already there or your own. In video clips, there are a bunch of countdowns already here. These countdowns add over top of your screen so that anything that's actually in the background is going to be overlaid. I did upload one of my own videos right here for my intro. You can also add background images. These will show up behind your layout when you're adding guests or something like that. And and some of these are animated and they can look really pretty cool. Now, if we hop back over into StreamYard, let's take a look at their text tools and they have a lower third tool called Banners and you can write your own, just click on it and it'll show it down here in the lower third. There is a way you can kind of adjust the way that these things appear. And then back over here in Melon, it has the same kind of banners, but you can actually resize these and move them anywhere you want on the screen. And then it also has a ticker feature. You can write in your own text you can move the text from left to right or right to left, and you can also move the ticker from the top to the bottom. Back here in Restream, we're gonna take a look at the text capabilities. You can add and remove basically what I would say is lower thirds. You type up whatever you want, you can select them and add them right here. Back here in StreamYard, there is a video file feature which will play a video file directly from your hard drive, and these files can be paused if you mouse over the actual file. And then if you go into comments, you can see the comments from your chat right here in comments and you can actually select one and post it to the screen. Here in Melon, one of the coolest unique features is the ability to add an alert. And these come right out of Streamlabs. It's the benefit of actually being owned by Streamlabs. So you could put an alert in there for donations, subscribers, members, whatever you want. They are really easy to configure and set up. And this feature is just absolutely fantastic. You can turn them on and off with the slider and it also has a donation goal as well. It also has its own video feature. You can add a video in, move it around on the screen with the different layouts. And the beautiful thing is if you mouse over it, you can pause it, adjust the volume level, all that kind of stuff right here on your screen. And of course, it has the actual chat feature as well. It's very simple to add. Now Restream, if you click down here on the plus, you can add your own video file, a local video. It's going to show up here on the left 
and then you just click the slider to add it in and you can move this around by dragging it and dropping it over top of any of the windows that are already in there and maybe the coolest feature in restream is the ability to add background music right here you just click on add background music and you can add royalty free tracks to your background you just select one it shows up over here on the left as if it were a guest you can use the slider to add it and you can adjust the volume and the whole nine yards and then if we move on to the chat feature for restream studio it does have another unique feature here the ability to have a chat overlay if you turn this on on the right hand side of your screen all of your chat will show up as it scrolls down the screen you can also select any piece of individual chat, click on it, and it will show up right down in the bottom left-hand corner as a lower third as well. The last piece I wanna show you is this screen capture, and literally all three of these screen capture programs are exactly the same. You'll see each one as I walk through gives you the ability to add a window share, a screen share, or a Chrome tab, and they function exactly the same as well. All three of these offer some really unique features for sure but how easy is it to use each one of them for ease of setup I really just want to show you how long it would take if you just logged in and got ready to go live on each of these products so we're gonna start out with StreamYard. we go up and we click log in and we're just gonna tell it what our Gmail account is for our account and it's gonna send us a login code to our Gmail you just grab that code and put that code in here and boom it brings us right in now you can set up your destination we're gonna click YouTube and then we can create a broadcast I'm gonna delete this one here and you just select where you want to go you put the title of your live stream you put your description in you select your privacy then you can schedule it for later if you wanted to schedule your live stream you click create a broadcast and now we're ready to go we just enter the studio it's gonna bring us up to this screen where we're going to add our camera and microphone and you just click the gear button go ahead and select your camera and your audio and you want to select what you want to listen to your audio through if you have guests coming on and you can adjust your mic volume here and my camera didn't come up so i clicked refresh and right away it came up after refreshing the screen and then you just click enter studio and really all you have to do is add yourself to the live stream and you can click go live and you're ready to go with StreamYard. Over here in Melon, we're gonna go ahead and click on products. We're gonna select Melon. Then we're going to click login. We're gonna go ahead and log in with our account for YouTube. It's gonna just run us through the permissions for our account. Once we're in, we can just click got it on this and we'll go down and adjust to make sure we have the right camera. So you just click this little arrow here. We can select our camera link that's what I'm using and select the resolution for your camera and then we can add our microphone by clicking this arrow here we're gonna add our audio input and we're going to add the speaker or however we're going to be listening to our stream more than likely you should be using headphones here but you are free to use whatever you like the echo cancellation and all that stuff seems to work pretty well in melon so you can possibly get away without actually using headphones and then all you really need to do once you set that up is click the go live button down in the bottom right and boom you're live with melon so here we are on the website we're just gonna go to log in and click log in now we can add a channel right here in the top left and you just select the one you want to add you can connect it to your YouTube channel which is what I'm gonna do it just walks you through the normal permissions and we allow it and then we can create an event all we need to do is click enter live studio up on the top right and that'll take us right into the live studio once we're in the live studio we want to go ahead and click this little gear button down here in the lower right and we can select our video input and we can select our resolution and then we're going to select our audio our microphone and last but not least our listening device so your speakers or your headphones or anything like that and you can also select your live stream quality what you want to live stream at and now we can just hit the go live button in the top right hand corner and we're ready to go live probably the biggest reason people use these apps is for the guest adding features so let's walk through how they work for the streamer and the guest so here's how a guest would enter from StreamYard. they have the link they click on the link it opens up a web browser that web browser is going to go ahead and ask you if you want to add your camera you can add your camera and allow 
Then all you need to do is add your camera and microphone if it's not already added, but most times it will be. So all you need to do is put your name in the display name, check that your audio works. You can go into the camera here and adjust your camera settings and your microphone settings so your headphones are set up properly. But once you do, you just click enter the studio and you are in. As the streamer, what you're gonna do is grab this link right here in the invites, send it out to your friends. And now you can see down in the bottom, people are appearing and you just add each individual by clicking on their screen. You can remove them by clicking on their screen. We'll add everyone in. Now we have four folks and here are the different layouts that you can use. Some of these layouts are pretty cool and you can just drag and drop someone into a different window if you like. Now here's how a guest is going to add to Melon. They get the link, they click on the link, it takes them to a web page. it asks them if they want to allow their camera and they give permission to allow their camera and microphone phone to be used then it brings up this screen where they're going to put their name in select their camera and microphone and also their audio output that they want to be listening to with their headphones and there are a couple of other settings that they can set here camera resolution and that sort of stuff once they're ready they just click join and they're in now from the actual streamers perspective you can see this is set up so you get your guests on the left hand side and we're going to copy out the link to invite our guests and they appear over there on the left and you just click show on stream to add them to the stream and now we have a fourth guest just click show on stream and you can solo folks by clicking these buttons right here and here are the different layouts that are available with Streamlabs Melon. You can also just drag and drop a person from one window to another very easily. And there are some really neat layouts here as well. Now we're going to take a look at adding someone with Restream. So they get the link, they click on the link, it takes them to a web page. Once again, they have to allow their mic and their camera. Then you just come in to this screen right here. You can click on the microphone buttons or the little gear so that you can set up your microphone. You put in your name and you click join stream. It's really simple. Now over for the streamer, I'm just gonna click here and collect my link, send it out to individuals, and you see they show up here on the left hand side. You just have to click this slider to add your guests and we'll add all of our guests here. And this actually looks pretty nice. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through all of the layouts that you can use. Once again, you can just drag and drop people into a different window if you want. I do like how the animations kind of flow in. It is really, really cool. And that is all the window setups. All three are pretty easy to add guests to. All three of these apps have free features and paid tiers. So let's take a look and compare what you get with each one. With StreamYard for free, you get screen sharing, banners, on-screen comments, six on-screen participants or guests, you get your brand colors and your green screen. You can stream anywhere. StreamYard branding in all streams. Of course, for free, they're gonna brand the streams, but you do have streaming limits. You can stream for 20 hours a month and it resets every month. Now, once you bump up to the basic for $25 a month, you get a lot more. You get everything in the free plan. Plus, they remove the branding. You can stream unlimited, 10 on-screen participants. You can add your own logos, your own overlays, your own background. You can use a custom RTMP, record up to four hours of stream, and of course, multi-stream to three different destinations. For the professional, you can record up to eight hours, multi-stream to eight destinations. You get your full HD and individual audio recordings, which is pretty nice. With Melon, for free, you can accept donations, which means you can use the widgets, and that's awesome. You get real-time alerts from your supporters. You do have streaming limits. You can stream for four hours every month and it resets at the end of each month you can have guests up to two participants and you get a limited amount of brand customization with the melon branded watermark when you bump up to just $15 you get all the free stuff plus you remove the watermarks six participants unlimited streaming you can multi stream up to three destinations up to four full hours of recording disconnect protection custom RTMP services 15 days of recording storage 
storage, unlimited branding, logo, overlays, and themes, and you get to upload media files up to 150 megabit limit. That is a whole heck of a lot for $15. And if you bump yourself up to pro, you get all that plus nine participants, audio only recordings, if you wanna do a podcast or something like that, up to 10 hours of recording. You can upload media files with a 300 megabyte limit, multi-stream to an unlimited number of destinations in full HD, 30 days of recording storage and priority support. Restream does have a very comprehensive free section. You get to stream unlimited, on-screen comments and captions, chat overlays, screen sharing, background music, high-res audio, and up to six stream participants. Now, you basically get the exact same thing for $19 a month with a few more stream participants. And you really don't get anything additional until you move up to professional at $4. $49 a month and then you can remove the watermark, add the custom graphic overlays, the video uploads, stream in full HD and split the audio tracks for recording, which is a really cool feature. Wow, I mean that's a lot. So all that's left are my thoughts on each app. So which one is best? This is one heck of a showdown and there are a lot of really, really cool things about each piece of software. For me, I love the fact that Restream has all these cool transitions when you're adding guests and you get a lot for free with Restream. With Melon, you get all the same layouts, but for free, it is really limited, only four hours a month. And that's kind of disappointing. With that being said, those four hours a month, you do get to use the alerts and a lot of their other features, which I think is really cool. With StreamYard, you get 20 hours every month that resets at the end of the month. But to be honest with you, it feels kind of old. They haven't done anything with StreamYard since the last time I did a video. It still has all the same layouts and to be honest with you, it just seems like Melon and Restream Studio have totally passed them. Now, once you get into the middle tier, to me, it's no question, hands down, Melon is the value winner. You get so much, in fact, almost the whole shebang for just $15 a month, whereas you're gonna pay more for the mid-tier for Restream Studio and for StreamYard. And to be honest with you, especially with Restream Studio, you don't get that much in that mid-tier. You can't even remove the watermark with Restream at that mid-tier. There really doesn't seem to be a lot of purpose for there to be a mid-tier for Restream at all. You do get a pretty decent amount though with StreamYard, but of course you pay a little bit more for it and you still don't have all of the cool layouts that you get with Melon. Now, once you go to that $50 price range, I really do think it's pretty close and it's a matter of priorities between Restream and Melon. If you wanna have the alerts and that connection with Streamlabs and the ability to stream to as many destinations as you want at the same time, then Melon is the hands down winner. If you're going to be doing podcasting and things like that, then maybe Restream Studio is a good one to look at because you can record the audio tracks separately and that is a really cool thing and of course you still can live stream to a couple of different locations at the same time and you can also do that with StreamYard. The odd man out here seems to be StreamYard. It really doesn't do anything better than either of the other pieces of software. In fact, it kind of has a lot less features for what feels like more money. And that's not to say that it's a bad piece of software. Any of these streaming softwares that you choose is going to get the job done for you. But for me personally, if I was going to choose between the three, I'd probably choose Melon. And the thing that really does it for me is the fact that you can add alerts to your live streams. I want that extra level of interaction with my audience that neither StreamYard or Restream offer. It has almost all the same layouts that you can get with Restream. And I love the themes where you can change all of the fonts and all of the backgrounds and all of the foregrounds. I just think it's got so much to offer. And while the actual UI isn't quite as pretty as Restream's, at the end of the day, I'm looking for great features, reliability, and of course, price because I'm a cheap dude. As for StreamYard, I don't know what they've been doing for the last year, but I really hope that they decide to step up their game because we need that competition. That kind of competition is the reason why Restream and Melon have gotten so good so fast. But I think it's time for them to step it up. Now, don't forget there are links to each one of these 
in the description for you to have a look for yourself. And let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want a more in-depth look at Melon, StreamYard, or Restream, check these videos out. If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or a live streamer, subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.